take your Bibles, if you will, turn with me to Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. We're going to be in chapter 18, Jeremiah chapter 18. Good to see everybody tonight. In Jeremiah 18, you find an interesting directive given to Jeremiah. Jeremiah always, if you read the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah always used illustrations. This illustration is a very easy one to see and a very easy one to preach. But there's something I would like to draw your attention to, and I, I, won't, I won't keep you long tonight. I know you've been here all day. I know that, and I appreciate your diligence to get a, a, a good choir product for us. Uh, but I want to talk to you tonight about a simple thought. There is a potter for that. There is a potter for that. And let's all stand together. We're going to read Jeremiah chapter 18, and we are going to look at verses 1 through 6. In Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1, the Bible says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Isaac Weiss, can you do this in prayer, buddy? Amen. You may be seated. Thank you again for coming tonight. I know this isn't got a lot to do with Christmas, uh, but I wanted to give you a thought. At this time of year, it's amazing to me how discouraged folks can get. I've been told, I don't have the proof of this, but I have been told that this is the time of year that more suicides happen than any other time of the year. I have heard that this is the time when more folks get discouraged than any other time of the year. Not exactly sure why that is. We've got so much to celebrate. But there is still uh, things that happen in the world that make people get to this point of feeling low and feeling sad. I thought about this verse, and I've heard this preached a few times, and it always has the theme of a broken person coming to a potter and having that broken person uh, being fixed by the potter being the Lord Jesus Christ. I can remember in my life at 11 years old, the Bible talks about us being uh, uh, broken. The uh, Bible talks about us being undone. And I believe uh, spiritually it doesn't take a lot to make the conclusion that before we were saved, uh, we were completely broken. Before we got saved, we were completely shattered. Before we got saved, uh, we were uh, not much to be used with, perhaps just a lump of clay sitting on the wheel. Uh, then Jesus Christ was born for us. Jesus Christ lived for us and then died for us. And because of that, uh, gave us the opportunity to ask him to save us. And that's he started to work on us. Be, made us a new creature. And I thought about those things, and sometimes I believe that we as Christians uh, can get a little hard on themselves. I remember when I got saved, but I also must uh, admit to you, I didn't lead a very good life from salvation until I was older. You know my testimony. I'm not going to wear that out tonight, but please understand, along the way there have been times uh, that I have felt like I was rebroken. Along the way, it felt like there was times that I was not only uh, 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 broken once, but I was also broken again. There are times in my life I felt like I didn't maybe have uh, the close relationship that I had with the Lord at one time. Or sometimes, doesn't it feel like you have a closer relationship to God one day uh, than you have another day? Doesn't it seem like things seem to get in the way? I thought about this, uh, this potter's vessel. I thought about this illustration. And I've got to be honest with you, many times in our home a glass has broken or a plate has fallen on the floor and we have a tile floor in our kitchen and oh, it's almost certain death for anything that falls that's glass on our tile floor. It never seems to make it. Even the unbreakable Corel seem to find their demise in an early funeral when they fall on our floor. And I thought though, Brother Jimmy, as I was thinking about this message, you know, not everything breaks the same. 
We've got a lot of things in our home that uh, have broken, maybe chipped once or twice. I mean, over 25 years, you find a few things here and there that don't break quite the same way. Uh, perhaps there's a favorite glass that just has a little chip out of it uh, and it's broken. And somewhere along the line, just that little chip. And boy, it sure does seem a shame to waste that uh, product. But boy, it's got a little chip in it. And sometimes you get a crack in something. And at the end of the day, would you not agree that even though it's just got a little uh, uh, break in it, it's still broken? broken. I got to thinking about this and the vast majority of the time we cannot wait to acclimate this message with an absolute broken mess that comes to the potter. This broken mess uh, comes to the potter and the potter remakes that thing, remakes that vase, remakes that plate or that cup, remakes that thing into something that the potter enjoys. We know that spiritually the potter is representing Jesus Christ or God in this instance, talking in the book of Jeremiah. But may I submit to you something tonight? I would like you to think of something just not quite so damaging. What about a Christian's life, Brother Coolidge, is not completely broken, but is still chipped? Should they too not go to the potter's wheel to see if they can be worked on a little bit by the potter? Well, wait a minute, preacher. You don't understand. I'm doing well. Uh, perhaps I had a bad day, uh, but understand this. I'm doing okay, and everything seems to be going all right. I'm not completely broken, so perhaps I don't need to visit the potter today. As I think about that, I often wonder sometimes if we don't go around broken just a little, and it really isn't necessary. I wonder if there are times in our life that we have that hairline fracture in the glass. Isn't that the most irritating? A little hairline fracture, and you certainly will pour something in that glass that will begin to leak. It's doing its job, mostly. Oh, the light bulb just kicked on. I like that. It's doing the best it can, bless God. I know there's a little fissure in it, uh, but only a little is leaking out, help me. And sometimes I believe we get to a place where the crack will not get smaller without attention. The break in your car windshield does not magically go away. And those lines of break that go through your windshield eventually catch the attention of someone that will make you get it fixed. I remember a small break in our windshield when Tam and I were just married and a little stone came up and it chipped it right at the bottom of the windshield and you could see it, but it wasn't bad. Oh, we drove it for a week or two, then one day it got really cold. And I flipped on the defrost, and boy, it started to defrost. And I went out the driveway, hit a bump. Next thing I know, that went, pfft. it broke everywhere. But it was always broken. It just wasn't broken all the way. You know, Christian, I thought about this a little bit as we go into this season. And again, I don't want to take up a whole lot of your time. But I believe we'd all raise our hands and say, you know what? Before I was saved, I was broken. Before I got to meet Christ, I, I was broken. I mean, my life was difficult. It was hard for me. And if I go back, even at 11 years old, uh, I got saved at 11 years old. And boy, I felt like it was something wonderful. I know I was just a kid, hard to understand. Not everybody got saved as a kid. But boy, I tell you, even at 11 years old, uh, uh, talking to Ron Brown, I felt like, you know what? I'm not going to hell. And I felt pretty good about that. In that moment, it seemed like the potter took a hold of me and made my life whole again. But, you know, I've got to be honest with you. It wasn't long after that uh, that I was broken again. It wasn't long after that that, bless God, I made some decisions along the line that perhaps were not the best thing in the whole wide world. And the Lord had to take a proverbial hammer to the vase that I was. And again, I was broken. Somebody came along and told me, hey, you need to be saved. Well, I knew I didn't need that because I'd already gotten it. If you've gotten saved, you don't need to do it again. And that, you know, that man told me, he says, well, bless God, you don't look like a Christian. So finally, the Lord got a hold of my heart and I got fixed up again. I met my wife and boy, everything seemed to be going in the right direction. And I must submit to you this. I don't believe I've ever gotten to a point, Brother Bobby, where I've been completely broken. But boy, there's been chips along the way. 
I don't think I've ever gotten to a point where I've laid there in a pile of glass and I need absolute help or there's not going to be much there, but bless God, thank God for the potter. If you're laying in a pile of glass today or a pile of uh, pot shirts today, bless God, I've got a potter for that. I mean, if you don't know him as Savior and you're broken tonight, I can guarantee you I've got a potter for that. But along the way, what happens is we allow our lives maybe to get shattered again. And I allowed my life by making bad decisions uh, to get shattered again. And boy, I'm sure glad uh, that there was a potter for that too. The same potter that saved my soul, the same potter that made me a new creature, that same potter was able to take that marred vessel that I had become and make it good again. Something that the potter liked, by the way, aren't you glad? I want you to notice that in the scripture. The, the vessel became something the potter liked, not that I liked. In your Christianity, it's not about you. It's about him. Let him make you into something that he likes. Don't worry about what you like. Boy, that's hard to take. I knew the amens would slow down right there. But along the way, I must admit to you, there are different types of breakage. And this is kind of where I wanted to sit down for a minute. Why do we wait so long to see the potter? There's a potter for the broken that's unsaved. There's a potter for the one that's completely blasted and they just need a, a help again. And bless God, boy, now it's time to go down to the potter's house. Why do we wait so long to go see him? Why do we wait so long? Uh, bless God, uh, this same glass has been chipped and boy, it's cut my lips several times. Why don't I get that thing taken care of? Sometimes we live our life and we're so hard on ourselves. Uh, bless God, I'm not sure that the Lord would like me the way that I am. It's not what that scripture says, my friend. The scripture says that potter can make you into something he likes. Help me now. That potter says, I can do something about the, what you're going through. I just got a chip. That's okay. I got a potter for that. Oh, bless God, I've got a fracture in the side of my glass. Don't you worry. I got a potter for that. Well, wait a minute. My plate's cut in half. And bless God, I don't know if I can ever fix it. Don't you worry. I got a potter for that. What's amazing to me is that we wait so awful long. Oh, we're still functional, just a little bit sleeking out the side. Nothing more irritating than a glass that does that. I've got a potter for that. The question I have is this. Can we be repaired? We've got a potter for that. Can the Lord make us whole again? And wait a minute. A lot of times we put this in the lap of folks that seem to be having a harder time than us. Perhaps thinking that maybe Jesus doesn't have time to fix us. Does anybody in here not need fixing? I didn't see one feeble hand to go up. When's the last time you asked Jesus to help you? I, I know this sounds simple. But as I read that verse, can I ask you a question? Are you beyond fixing? Help me now. I want you to think. This is personal now. I'm being personal right now. Are you beyond fixing? The potter can fix anybody. The potter can fix any break. The potter can fix anything that comes along his way. Is there anybody that could say in this room unequivocally, I don't need a visit to the potter? Is there anybody in this room that said, if I would go to the potter, he, he, there's no way he could fix what I am? So along those lines, can I ask you a question? Why will we wait to get to a point where we're completely broken until we go see the potter? If there's a fellow that we know that we can talk to, that we can, that we can be with, that we can rely on, that we can love and have him love on us, I wonder if there's some reason that we're not going to the potter because even if there's a chip in the glass, I've got a potter for that. Even if there's a leak in the side, I've got a potter for that. Oh, it's not holding flowers as well as it used to, and let me be honest. Is anybody holding flowers as well as they used to? I've got a potter for that. We act as if this relationship with Christ only kicks in when we need him the most. But I'm going to tell you tonight, why would we wait to go see the potter? Now, I want to show you something else, and I'm all done. O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the, whose hand? 
I've got one stipulation. I've got one thing I want to bring to you before we close the night. I think we'd all be in agreement that the potter can fix anything. I think we'd all be in agreement that there are times that perhaps we wait a little too long to go and make a visit to that potter. I think that we would also be in agreement to say that the last time you waited too long, perhaps the glass started leaking a little bit more than it needed to. Can I submit something to you before you go? This only works in one set of hands. You can't fix your own pottery. I want you to listen to me and listen to me well. Everybody's answer is Jesus. Everybody. The reason we wait so long to go to him, I have no idea. I'm sure it's different with every single person why it's so hard to get to the potter's house. When you get there, you're fixed. And the people that go to the potter's house come back as the potter likes them. But it only works in the potter's hands. It only works when you allow Jesus Christ to take control of what the clay is or what the glass is or whatever you want to think or wherever you want to put your life. It only works in the hands of the potter. It doesn't work in the hands of the, uh, uh, of the televangelist. It doesn't work in the hands of the psychologist. It doesn't work in the hands of some self-help book. It doesn't work in the hands of a great wealth. It doesn't work in the hands of popularity. It doesn't work in the hands of alcohol or drugs. It doesn't work in any of those hands. It only works in the hands of the potter. Amen. Can you get your life right? Yes, every single person can. And by the way, every single person in this room needs help in some way or other by Jesus Christ. But it's only his hands that can fix it. So many people look for the hands of the potter elsewhere. Bless God, I'll just go get some alcohol. That's not where the answer is. I promise you're not going to find the answer there. Oh, I'll go find it in uh, everything else in the whole wide world. I'll find it in drugs. I'll find it in all these. No, you're going to find it only in the hands of the potter. We as Christians should be absolutely privy to this fact. But there are so many times that we won't go to the potter for whatever reason. I'm strong enough I don't need to. Hogwash, no piece of pottery is very strong. There's no glassware that can withstand a sledgehammer of life. And I'm going to tell you right now, Bethel, we need to visit him. We need to, oh, I'm not, I'm not talking about a fairy tale God. I'm talking about we need to visit him. We need to find our way to our knees and say, God, look, I'm not completely broken. I'm not submitting to you tonight that anybody's completely broken. But Lord God, if you have a chip or a break or a fracture or hairline crack, why would we wait? Why would we wait? I'm not too far gone. Well, bless God, go to the potter's house. I've suffered a little setback. Go to the potter's house. I'm not reading my Bible like I used to. Go to the potter's house. I've got a potter for your problem. Oh, preacher, I wish I'd come to church more. I wish everybody would come to church more. But bless God, we're not going to find the answers elsewhere. I'll listen to good music. I'm glad you will. But it's still the potter's hands. I'll go to good uh, evangelistic meetings. Great, but it's still the potter's hands. You have to go to the potter to get yourself as he wants you. And aren't you glad? That when you leave his place, he's satisfied with his product. Boy, think about this. Does he ever get, has he ever gotten a pretty vase? Has he ever gotten a great plate? Has he ever gotten a fancy goblet? Usually he gets a pile of rubble. Bless God, I guarantee you the potter has never seen a perfect dish. He's never seen fine china. He's never seen a beautiful uh, golden goblet. All he gets is the cast of sides. And you know what? When you leave the potter's house, he's happy with what he's made you to be. What a good God we serve. I don't want to live in a place where, bless God, I I don't know about going to see God today. I've got a chip in me. That's the time you've got to see him. 
Oh, I don't know. My life is, oh, it's got a crack in it, preacher. I don't know. Oh, bless God. That's the time to see him. He wants to see you. He wants to help you. But he can't help you unless you come. I want you to notice they had to go to the potter's house. They, the potter didn't come to them. They went to the potter. Takes action on our part to go and see him. My challenge to you tonight, if you're broken, I've got a potter for that. If you're chipped, I've got a potter for that. If you're cracked, and there's a lot of you that are cracked, I've got a potter for that. If you want to be polished up, I've got a potter for that. Go see the potter. Let's get ourselves so the potter is happy with his vessel. Amen? Dear Lord, I love you tonight. I thank you so much for what you've done. I believe that this is something that would work for every single person in the world. I believe our country could turn around with this same thought. Lord, I can't imagine we live in a day and age where we have to talk about whether we put a nativity scene on a hunk of grass or not. But here we are. I wish we'd have gone to the potter's house a long time ago. Lord, help us now. I'm glad we're not too far gone. I'm glad we're not too messed up. I'm glad, Lord, that well, these, these plates might not sell in a garage sale, but the potter wants them. Lord, I'm so very thankful for that. Help us. Help us to become new again. Help these marred vessels in your hands to be something that you're pleased with. Lord, that can only come from your work. Help us. We certainly love you. And we certainly thank you for loving us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Every head bowed, every eye.